Good evening, and welcome to Ripon Church of Christ and our Wednesday devotional that we're having uh, at 7 uh, p.m. And I'm uh, just great to uh, be able to study. Uh, there is a psalm for that, and I've just really been enjoying this, and I hope you've been following along and enjoying this also. We looked at last week how Israel fell into some sins, and I, I started off uh, by by us and, and when we have fallen into sin and how do we feel you know knowing that we have a God um, and what he's done for us and how does that make us feel and at times we do that and we, just, we need to cry out to him we need to pray to him and ask for his forgiveness there is a psalm for that of petition and, and for asking God for uh, forgiveness and repenting of our sins Psalm 106, we're going to continue with part two tonight. The psalmist prays God for his goodness, for his loving kindness and his mercy upon those who do uh, repent. Psalm 106 is a praise psalm. We praise God for who he is, but it's also one of confession and petition. We looked at how sin overtook Israel. In fact, there were many of those sins. We looked at three sins last week. The, the sin of rebellion, and we looked at the sin of impatience, and also the sin of envy. When we look inside self, when we look inside ourselves, into our, our own hearts, are we guilty of any of these? Well, at times we may be, but let's make sure that we do not stay in something like this. That caused us to be separated from our God. Tonight, we will look at the other sins of Israel. Let's look at sin number four, idolatry. In our text here in Psalm 106, verse 19 through 23, he states, their, their idolatry occurred at, at Mount Horeb, which is Mount Sinai. Psalm 106, 19 and 20 says that where Moses gave the Ten Commandments. That's where he gave the Ten Commandments. The first commandment in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 and 4 states, You shall have no other gods uh, before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above, on the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. And this is exactly what they did, ignoring this commandment. They made a golden calf to bow down to and to worship. And how sad is that? When they had the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the heavens and the earth who created everything, the God who saves us, they go make a golden image and bow to it. Why would they do such a thing? Exodus chapter 32 states, Aaron allowed them to do this. The high priest Aaron, he knew better Verse 5, he proclaimed the day they finished as a day of worship. The day of worship. Poor leadership, poor decision making, and a very poor choice that they made. Exodus 32 states they corrupted themselves. See, they knew better. The scripture in our text of Psalm 106, 21 and 22, they forgot their Savior. See, if they knew their Savior, they would not do this. But they forgot their Savior. They forgot who He was, what He's done for them. See, they, they forgot the God who delivered them out of Egyptian bondage. They forgot the God who caused miracles to save them, parting the Red Sea, all those things He did for them. Notice the word in verse 23, therefore. Because they did this, that God's wrath was upon them. And the Bible says here that God was going to destroy them. See, God witnessed their horrible sin, and he basically said that he's going to wait. He will wait for someone to intercede for them. Luckily, they had Moses. Moses spoke up for them, stood in the breach, it says, in that broken place in the nation, and pled for God to to God to, to spare them, to save them. See, sin is terrible. Sin separates us from God, Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. 
but God's mercy is rich. What about us? Do we commit idolatry by worshiping the things of this world? Have you ever thought about what gets most of your time and allegiance? Think about the things that we love in this world. By our time, do we love those things more than we love God? Let's hope not. Let's look at sin number five. Sin number five is the sin of ingratitude. In verses 24 through 27, it says, Then they rejected the pleasant land. They did not believe his word, but grumbled in their tents. They did not listen to the voice of the Lord. Therefore, he swore to them that he would have them fall in the wilderness, and that he would bring down their descendants among the nations and scatter them in the lands. See, Israel showed a, a lack of trust in God in Kadesh. You know, when the ten spies came back with a, a negative, a bad report of the land of Canaan. Unbelief set in verse 25. See, they were ungrateful for what God did for them. They hated the land that God promised them, and they, they did not believe His promise. And God raised up His hand to them in wrath because of their sin, and their seed was scattered among the pagans, of Assyria and Babylon. We can read that in 2 Kings and also in 2 Chronicles. See, it is easy for us at times to forget what God has brought us out of. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, 10, it talks about how God has brought us out of darkness into His marvelous light. See, we could easily give ourselves to something that we really do not believe we are serving over God. We can have idols in our lives. It doesn't have to be a golden image of something. It could be among many things. We need to make sure that, that God is the one that we are worshiping. God is the one that we are trusting in. God is the one that we are serving. Let's look at sin number six. Immorality. Numbers 25 teaches us that God... That God, people again fell into sin. God's people fell again into sin. And they faced being destroyed as a nation. Verse 28, they joined themselves also to Baal Peor and the sacrifices offered to the dead. Who is Baal Peor? Well, that's the idol of the Moabites. Here at Peor, the Israelites cheated on God and they enjoined themselves to idols. See, they, they bowed before a make-believe God. God's people fellowshiped with pagans. They sat and they ate with them and, and as they worshipped their false gods. Are we doing such things today? God brought down the judgment upon Israel. His wrath caused a plague on Israel and it killed 24,000 of them in just two days. Numbers chapter 25, verse 9, and also 1 Corinthians 10, 8, Paul uh, addresses that. The two final sins we are, are, are distressed in God. Not trusting in God, Psalm 106, 32 and 33, and also disobedience to Him in verses 34 through 39. And notice what happens as we read 40 through 43. Notice God's anger and His punishment. It says, Therefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against His people, and He loathed His inheritance. So he handed them over to the nations, and to those who hated them, ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were subdued under their power. Many times he would rescue them. They, however, were rebellious in their plan, and they sank down into their guilt. Isn't that sad? But what do we do when we mess up? What do we do when we sin and we fall short of God's glory? We have a way back. What did they do as they fell down in these sins? And God's 
uh, wrath came upon Israel. Well, they cried out to God to save them. God heard Israel's cry, verse 44. See, they repented, and God remembered his promise to them. They had a covenant. He had a covenant with them. And he had compassion on them, verses 45 and 46. So we think about us, and how does this lesson apply to us today? At times, we may fall short. We may mess up. We may sin. Let's do our best not to, but when we do, we can remember that we can call out to God in prayer. We can return to Him. We can repent. We can ask for Him to, to have His grace and His mercy upon us. See, God's grace is bigger than our disgrace. Remember Him. Praise Him. Repent. And God will forgive your sins. He will welcome you back into His fold. The lesson is yours tonight. I hope something that was said in this Word of God from Psalm 106 has pricked your heart, has encouraged you to strive not to sin, but if you do fall into sin, that you will return to Him and repent of your sins because God loves you and He wants you to come back. I hope you have a great week. If you want to be with us tomorrow night, we'll be studying Hebrews chapter 5 tomorrow night on Zoom. We'll be doing that at 7 p.m. If you need to know uh, how to get on Zoom, just give me a call. My number is 209-450-6931, and I would love to walk you through that, and, and you can get on the, the study with us. Have a great week. God bless.